we know that Thais is probably in this not just to win the top prize, but also kind of avenge RDU, his teammate who fell earlier on. And because Thais and G2 are the ones organizing this whole English broadcast, I guess it would be natural to assume everybody's cheering for Thais now. But Bunny Hopper is a very worthy opponent, of course, the recent summer champion and one of the most storied players in EU. Yeah, Bunny Hopper's success has been pretty prominent recently. You know, he's a player that we've seen, you know, a lot of players would know the name of Bunny Hopper, but, you know, ever since that big, you know, just tournament win with the Summer Championship, he's definitely been a player to just look out for more and more. Already qualified for Worlds, which is just a huge feat in and of itself. But, you know, if there's uh, if there's any formidable opponent, it is in Tice. Tice is also, you know, widely considered one of the strongest European players as, you know, he was kind of like, I like to say, the OG Hunter Ace, where he was just winning everything a couple of years ago and obviously took some time to focus on streaming and building a community. But, you know, he's back. He's ready to play. and He's ready to, you know, try and take home that beautiful car. Yeah, absolutely. That is like a little shout out I wanted to mention since you uh, mentioned Hunter Ace. He is the first three star master, but a lot of the guys in the tournament are not too far off from catching up, I would say. Anyway, we did see the bans coming in and both players' odd rogues are out of contention. I think it makes a lot of sense because both players also have Zoo, which the odd rogue can usually beat pretty consistently. Yeah, odd rogue is one of the most efficient of those anti-aggro aggro decks, as you do have access to SI7 agent. You have access to deadly poison with your already two attack dagger that cleans up almost every single minion in both of these players' aggro lineups. So it definitely makes sense to, you know, eliminate that factor from it and try and win through just beating the other aggressive decks. I think for Tice, however, what's going to struggle for him quite a bit is that Tempo Mage. Tempo Mage is a very solid deck when it hits something into anti-control territory, but when it goes up against other very aggressive decks, it can struggle quite a bit as it doesn't get on the board fast enough. Yeah, we did see in the graphic, it has bad matchups across the board. And so I think Tyson's reasoning is all right. I got to get this deck out of the way. And he queues it up first. That hand is not looking very good, though. Not a Mana Worm, but also not even an Archaeologist. Yeah, it doesn't have those early game starts that he really wanted or needed. I, I'm a little curious. See, you know, he did have the option to keep a Luna. You know, Tice probably thinks that this matchup is way more aggressive. So I like how he tossed away the Luna. Sometimes, you know, you can argue for keeping that card in almost every single matchup. But for this one, you know, if they get something like Spellstone down with Wolves, it could just be game over there. So I think Tice needs a much faster hand than that. Yeah, I really agree, especially with him being first. I think you kind of need to hard mulligan for a Mana Worm here. And as for Bunny Hopper, he doesn't have early minions of his own, but um, there's quite a lot of ways to mess with the mage because you are running a bunch of spells. Usually you can uh, counter the counter spell pretty efficiently. Yeah, not only that, but also, you know, these secrets are just a pain for Tempo Mage to deal with. Things like Wandering Monsters just take such good trades into Mana Worms or Arcanologists, and even cards like, you know, Venom Strike Trap just producing more minions while not being minions themselves is very strong to play around cards like the Explosive Runes. Yeah, now that you mention it, I feel like, especially with the possibility of the Spellstone Wolves coming down soon, this matchup might need to be carried by a Primordial Glyph for the Mage. Um, just because Tice hasn't picked up those early game, not necessarily win conditions, but things that you really need to kind of get the board in your favor. Yeah, we see both of these players, you know, I think obviously Bunny Hopper is getting the more beneficial aspect of, you know, his hand right now. He will have some early game plays. Tice really needs to pick up something because just using your hero power on turn two is not what you want to be doing. He really needed something like a, even a Mana Worm off curve there would have been much better than just fitting in a hero power. Not only that, but I think Bunny Hopper can pick up a lot of information from Tice. Like he can already rule out um, Mana Worms, Archaeologist, and Sorcerer's Apprentices. Tice would know that getting down any of these minions before the Hunter can play Secrets would be really beneficial. So Bunny Hopper knows that the hand from Tice is very slow, and he might take the opportunity to capitalize. Uh, Bear Shark is looking interesting because if you know that Tice doesn't have any minions, perhaps he has some sort of removal, and Bear Shark is immune to almost all of those. It is 
kind of weird to coin out a three drop when you don't have another three cost minion though. Yeah, I really like the play of the Crackling Razor Maw here because Bunny Hopper is going to expect that Tice's best play this turn is Karen Tor Secret. So he would rather get this minion down as quickly as possible. That way, you know, it not only does it not get hit by the explosive runes, but he can directly contest that Karen Tor Mage while saving on to the coin to be able to counter the counter spell. Bunny Hopper wants to have this coin as long as possible to make sure that this counter spell doesn't put in any work. Yeah, that is true. Uh, nowadays, Temple Mage only runs one counter spell, but it is worth considering, of course. And um, even if he is not going to use the coin for some kind of anti counter spell play, it also curves out into a coin subject nine after the bear shark will come down this turn. And I can't imagine anything else because having seen no secrets from Tyus, there's no fear of explosive runes. This bear shark could just uh, chunk away at Tyus's health total for the rest of the game. Yeah, Bear Shark is one of those very scary cards. It's really good in a lot of matchups. I'm actually surprised, you know, it hasn't, you know, pushed the aggressive hunters more and more. I mean, typically we've seen the hunters become this very death rattle oriented package, but just this being kind of like a larger fairy dragon that has that beast tag that curves out with Houndmaster, it is a pretty powerful card. Bunny Hopper will have to be careful, though, as to, you know, how he wants to navigate playing other minions because he will be very conscious of that possibility of the Cosmic Anomaly plus Shooting Star, but, you know, that doesn't even matter because Bear Shark's already gone. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty fortunate um, what was it, Cinder Storm for Tyus there, but honestly, I can't call it lucky from Tyus with this hand that was so unlucky to begin with. So now Bunny Hopper is faced with the option of whether he wants to coin out a minion or start developing some secrets. Um, subject 9 will pull, I'm, let me just take a quick look at the deck list and see which one of these are one of. So we can pull Explosive, another Venom Strike Trap, Snake Trap, it's just a lot, right? I think you just go for it, thins your deck out and helps you draw into Spellstone sooner eventually. Yeah, the one thing is, you know, you can remove all of these cards and constantly just keep developing secrets, but eventually at the end of the day, you're going to need to pressure your opponent because Tice will be able to eventually burn Bunny Hopper out of the game if Bunny Hopper does not get some kind of board development. So getting rid of the coin, you know, doesn't save it for the counter spell, but I don't think Bunny Hopper is too worried about that. He would rather get this minion on board, maybe force out some more reactive tools from Tice, while, like you said, thinning out the deck to draw that spellstone quicker. Tice goes with the play of fireballing away the subject nine. It's way too early to be thinking about saving your burn all for face here. I can see that the game plan from Tice is just, you know, I haven't taken any damage. Maybe Alaneth can carry me from here on out. So that is going to be coming down next turn. And as for Bunny Hopper, I feel like he can maybe have kind of a read on an Alaneth there. Uh, just going for Fireball seems a little bit reactive. So thinking about how he can set up into Tice's best play, which is that weapon. Um, it's just a bunch of secrets, though. That it is. I definitely like the development of the rat trap here. It wants to try and, you know, put down minions that will allow, or spells that will allow Bunny Hopper to potentially get minions. As Tice, you know, has not been playing too many cards from his hand, so that means that they are either very awkward, cheap spells that Tice wants to hold on to for certain situations, or it's just a lot of heavy burn that, you know, Tice really can't afford to play yet. And then since Bunny Hopper knows that there is a potential for an Alunith on six. Getting this Rat Trap down earlier means that he can, you know, change up his plays a little bit and make sure that he gets that 6-6, six, six, as Tice will need to play multiple cards per turn. Yeah, for sure. Tice will need to dump at least two cards next turn. Well, uh, it's just going to be, at some point, he'll need to play three a turn just to make sure he won't overdraw. So Bunny Hopper finally picks up a cheap beast that he can use to pair with this Houndmaster here. Um... It's a little bit off curve, but having no minions on Tice's board, I don't think you're very inclined to play any of the rest of these secrets, especially without having the Spellstone in your hand to be buffed yet. Yeah, it is a bit off curve, but I don't think Bunny Hopper's too sad to see this, as it is a lot of power on the board. Just having that 3-5 ton, that 4-3 body, it demands some kind of respect from Tice. Tice does have a fairly decent answer in that shooting star with the 
cosmic anomaly if he decides to go for it. Doesn't quite clean up the dire mole, so Tice is probably going to be thinking, you know, how does he navigate this in a way that he makes sure that dire mole is also dead, protecting the cosmic anomaly from dying initially on board. Yeah, he can think about starting with Glyph. Uh, I don't think you play out Apprentice yet, even though technically you could fit in Cosmic Anomaly, Apprentice, Glyph, and uh, the Shooting Star, just because Apprentice is so crucial later on when you're trying to end the game with one huge, big chunk of burst. And that means he'll also be wanting to save at least one of the anomalies later on. Also, I don't think this Luna is ever getting played for draw uh, because of Aluna's hand space issues. It's funny how that kind of works out, those two cards together. Yeah, it is a little funny. It's almost like the Luna comes down earlier as like a mini Alunith in a way, but has a body that needs to be dealt with in some form or fashion because you cannot let that card sit there. That card is too powerful. It's almost reminiscent of cards like Bran, Bronzebeard, or Fandral Staghelm as they represent such a massive threat on the board that they have to be answered. Right, so Tice actually takes the Cone of Cold there. I was eyeing the Flame Strike, but because he hasn't seen the Spellstone yet, I guess Cone of Cold is just a cheaper way to stall out Bunny Hopper's board and maybe get to push some damage with minions once or twice. And honestly, just maybe two to three attacks with Cosmic Anomalies. And the Temple Mage deck is just built to be able to burn out from that point. But because Bunny Hopper set up that Rat Trap and the three cards were played from Tice, he is now looking very solidly ahead on board. Yeah, I think what Tice is trying to do here is just take some stall cards as I don't believe his other options were any kind of burn or oriented spell, but takes the stall cards that way, you know, eventually maybe he can stick a couple mana worms down as he has not drawn those yet, hide them behind that, force Bunny Hopper to play very reactively, and eventually end the game with those mana worms and burn spell. Tice is also in, you know, a fairly decent position as long as he doesn't take too much damage and has, you know, some kind of pseudo answer for something like the Spellstone as Cosmic Anomaly plus Kona Cold will be able to answer that quite cleanly. That is a pretty cool combo. But speaking of not taking too much damage, we saw hesitation from Bunny Hopper at 27 health, nearly perfect health, already hesitating about whether he should take damage from that Cosmic Anomaly. And I think it's perfect perfectly reasonable to take one hit with the Eagle Horn Bow, given that the Mage is only on 8 mana and you have a lot of health. I think that keeping this Dire Mole alive one more turn will definitely help you in the long run to race the Mage. So I like the play from Bunny Hopper. And now Tyus might have to spend the Cone of Cold as early as now to delay this Rat Trap minion from going face. Yeah, there's a couple different implications from leaving up that Dire Mole. Like you were mentioning earlier, it does allow, you know, more consistent damage to be pushed every turn. But it also can potentially soak up some missile hits later on. I think that's on the back of Bunny Hopper's mind. I think it was more so just the fact that, you know, it will be able to push extra damage through, hopefully, if there's no freeze effect from this Primordial Glyph. As we can see for Tice, though, he does have access to that freeze. Right. And this is a pretty good usage here. It's making it so that if Bunny Hopper wants to clear off the Apprentice, then at least he'll still have one other minion on board. And it also means that Bunny Hopper will have to expend the last charge of his Eagle Horn Bow. At this point, I don't think it's likely that Tysa's minions will ever be able to attack safely because there's a punish for everything in the form of Hunter Secrets. Uh, there's no snipe in the secret package for Bunny Hopper, so the consolation for Tysa is that he can at least play out minions without fear but I don't know if he'll ever have the opportunity to attack. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to say. I do like this Mossy Horror here. It's kind of crazy to think that this card actually got a little bit of value in this matchup, because not only did it block the explosive runes, it also cleared off one of the minions. Yeah, Luna, although you're not too scared of it drawing because it's redundant with Aluneth, is still a threat in that it can maybe proc one secret and clear a path for this apprentice to hit face once. And uh, Bunny Hopper, if I were him, I would definitely respect the apprentice. It just makes so many scary things happen with um, Cosmic Anomaly and already being at 9 mana with a full hand for Tice. I think that it is worth losing your last bow charge on. It's so difficult to say because you take that damage and you also, you know, you forfeit Whoa. over that bow, which is a consistent force of damage. I 
I actually like the hold from Bunny Hopper here because I think that he may need to use this bow later on for removal or just to push that in final bits of damage because he does have access to Kill Command for that five damage on top of, you know, having that hero power going every turn. And these minions are never connecting face. Bunny Hopper's also already seen a Frostbolt and a Fireball, so he knows that the amount of burn is very, very limited. Uh, I wouldn't call it very, very. Maybe it's, I, I could say that you probably wouldn't expect another anomaly plus shooting star. So that is the most efficient way to clear off the board. And if you expect your board to live, then maybe you're not so scared of things like Cinder Storm. But yeah, maybe it's my cast revision talking with this looks like the exact punish. And Tyus is somehow able to turn the game on its head. He has the board control. He has Fireball and it's going to draw three more cards. Bunny Hopper without a good way to clear this. Looks like Tice is just going to win very soon. Yeah, Tice is going to. I think Bunny Hopper, you know, he made a very bold call with that play. But I think in Bunny Hopper's mind, he thought through it and said, you know what, even if the, you know, Sorcerer's Apprentice is on the board or not, all of that were to have been able to be done that turn. And just the Kieran Tor would not have come down as it would have been, you know, enough mana to cast all of those cards. So I think he was weighing out saying, you know what, the reduction doesn't matter that much as if he has all of those cards in his hand currently, and it's not just a bunch of minions, as Tice's majority of the deck are minions left, then he can potentially win the game through applying that pressure. So, you know, very bold, very risky play, but I think he kind of had to go for it because he was so behind. Well, what do you think about starting with the Explosive Trap there? I feel like you should have triggered it with Snake Trap. I feel like Explosive is going to be more valuable to you in this game, so it at least prevents the Apprentice from going face. Uh, I guess he does still have other secrets that prevent going face, but I just don't see how the snake trap is ever getting value. Yeah, I'm trying to see. The the explosive... I would have probably rather seen that onto the board as well. You're exactly right. You know, the explosive does clear off the 3-2. Bunny Hopper was probably thinking that he wanted to get the Wandering Monster down, as he does not want to take any face damage. So... If he plays the explosive and then our let's let's say he plays the snake trap and triggers the counter spell, uh, then plays the explosive. Bunny Hopper, uh, Tice will be able to swing the sorcerer's apprentice in, both the freezing and explosive will go off, and then he won't exactly have any sort of way of killing off the four three. But I do see where, you know, potentially having that explosive is a little bit better. It's it's definitely a you know, a difficult call. Yeah. So at first glance, my instinct is to maybe not attack all here at all because it's just triggering Bunny Hopper's secrets. And Tice, um, with enough pings, looks like he could get there. But we saw from that useful graphic that there's only actually one more burn spell left in the deck. I guess the Glyph could maybe get something. Uh, but Fireball and Frostbolt are the only damage left. So that would mean Tice would have to ping for four turns if he didn't intend on attacking. So I kind of like this board setup. It's also resistant to Rexar if it were um, to come off the top. So, uh, oh, maybe it's not. It's Oh, it is because you saw that the explosive trap was was triggered, right, by the counter spell. So there's that's only a one of in the deck. So knowing that Bunny Hopper can't punish with something like Rexar plus explosive, all these three health minions will connect base at some point. It is very true. So I wonder if, you know, Bunny Hopper May have should, should have gone with the line where you mentioned of you know getting rid of that snake trap because those snakes aren't really going to do much in the long run for Bunny Hopper, whereas that explosive may have been able to push through those bits of damage in the end. So uh, I'm trying to you know calculate right here. I think Bunny Hopper really needs something strong off this wandering monster if he wants any chance, but I'm I'm not even sure if that's quite enough. I don't think it will be most of the time. Even if you get the 2-8 taunt from Shaman, um, he has so much damage on board, Fireball, Frostbolt, and even a Glyph to maybe pick something else up. So I think this is just going to be game. Yeah, I believe so as well. I believe if Bunny Hopper had uh, kept that explosive, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference unless he were to have drawn into that that uh that soccer rexar that you're mentioning earlier sorry i was drawing a blank on the card it's very you know 
good card. I don't know how I forgot about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no worries. So this is the moment of truth. What is the wandering monster? Not even a bloat back could have saved... Oh wait, that's four mana, right? I don't know. Is there anything that deals with the board on three mana? But anyway, Tice is going to take the first game with a very, very awkward starting hand, but Alunath is just such a beast in the matchup. And uh, I honestly think that that might have been a little mistake from Bunny Hopper there with the explosive trap um, being used to check for the counter spell. So he's going to have to shake that one off, but there's still a lot more Hearthstone to be played. And in terms of lineups, he's still looking pretty favored with that even Shaman. Yeah, I do think so as well. I think Bunny Hopper is still, you know, in a pretty decent position. I don't think he's too beat up about that. I do think he was making some very, you know, heads up critical thinking. For instance, we were questioning a little bit on that Sorcerer's Apprentice turn, but I really liked how he, you know, had some restraint there because he really recognized that most of Tice's deck left over was just minions. And minions aren't really going to do anything as he will have those secrets to kind of contest them constantly. Tice really needed the last couple of spells in his deck to be able to answer that board state. And fortunately for Tice, he did have that and capitalized on it just very powerfully. That is true. So it was just one more turn before Tice was going to go to Fatigue there and you take immediately four in total Fatigue ticks from the Alaneth if you count end of turn plus the draw you take on the next turn. So uh, if Bunny Hopper had held on one more turn there, I think Tice was done for. But anyway, that's all in the past now and um, just want to talk about the rest of the lineup. If you guys missed the graphic a while ago, both players are playing Zoo and Odd Rogue, although the Odd Rogues have been banned. And the standout deck from the lineup from Tice, I would say, is this Malagos Druid. It looks kind of out of place with these board-based aggressive decks. Well, I guess you can't really call it Tempo Mage board-based, but it is slower. Yet, it's been putting in some work. Yeah, it is much slower, but I think the addition of that Dream Petal Florist inside of Tice's list, something that I was you know, talking to RDU a little bit about, is that the reason they put it in is because it helps out the Quest Rogue matchup quite a bit. And they actually believe make it sounds like it's almost favored in a way uh, because you can reduce that mile ghost get it down on the board quickly and do some very crazy shenanigans with the swipes and the moon fires and the forbiddenness flute so i really like this version of mile ghost druid as it does help against other aggressive decks and is very strong at being you know essentially a burn deck i like to think of every deck as a aggro deck at heart so you know <laughs> whenever you can play a mile ghost and just start shipping spells at your opponent that's I mean, a good deck to me. Even Odd Warriors, kind of an aggro deck when your opponent's fatiguing, right? And then you just deal six, seven, eight damage to them every turn. That's gotta be aggro. Exactly. See, now you're on the now you're now we're on the same page, Gia. Every deck's an aggro deck. Well, if there's one thing I know for sure, there's not much more effective aggro than aggressively ramping, and Tice has just the hand to do that. Although Bunny Hopper has pretty decent start himself. Flame Imp is looking pretty juicy here. If he picks up something like a Happy Ghoul quite soon, that might be just the hand to try and combat the near-perfect hand from Tais with Wild Growth Nourish and also Spellstone as an emergency um, removal spell. Yeah, Tais just has an insanely good start here. Having, you know, just the ramp he needs, the draw, the even more ramp, and then also having that Spellstone being able to clear off this Flame Imp because... Part of the reason Zoo has a very strong start or can you know win this matchup pretty consistently is because it has those flame imp starts where they just kind of play a couple flame imps and then just keep chucking away damage. But as Tice has that answer and it's gonna be followed up by the ramp, it's not looking too good for Bunny Hopper right here. He's gonna need to pick up something pretty powerful. Yep, um, the Zoo versus Malagos Druid matchup has been widely argued about who's actually favored, and most of the time it comes down to. Uh, the druid having several cards that they need to get together. It's either some kind of plague into swipe to clear up the rest uh, type of board or just getting this super early ramp and then being able to UI at which point the, 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 the zoo just isn't able to come back. And Bunny Hopper has missed an early happy goal start. He also doesn't have Kelisa. So these little minions look like they're not going to be getting too much work done, but set up a Light Warden with double Voodoo Doctor behind it could be a bit scary for Tice. Yeah, I think Bunny Hopper is getting a little uh, 
he, he's thinking long and hard on these turns, and I think he wants to make sure he gets this Light Warden down because he may very well need this Light Warden to essentially carry him as he doesn't really have much he's working with right now, but he's already seen one of the spell stones, so most of the time there's no very strong way to answer this Light Warden outside of something like a second spell stone or hero power moonfire and they naturalize something because it gets out of control then you're kind of happy with that especially if it's a one drop yeah i think bloody hopper is very scared of swipe coming out especially if he plans to double buff the light warden all of his minions have one health so i wouldn't even be surprised to see one of this oh okay now we're talking i heard the audience like react a little bit there <laughs> that was the best draw in bunny hopper's deck right now i think he's thinking about whether he wants to you know, maybe buff up this light one with extra attacks, or if he just wants to get a 4-3 on the board. And I definitely like getting that Voodoo Doctor to become a 4-3. Yeah. And this is looking really good for Bunny Hopper right now, especially because Tice does not have swipe. Yeah, that is a little bit more swipe-proof because he used the Soul Infusion there. But funnily enough, even with this really great zoo start from Bunny Hopper, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Just having the capability to coin Plague next turn or... Um, it depends if he wants to nourish this turn, but I really don't think so. You won't know if you want to ramp or draw with this nourish. Um, okay, it looks like he is just going to go for that then. Yeah, I'm a little curious as to this ramp play. I think I would have much rather had seen the twig come out and potentially just put a swing onto the face. Yeah. Because next turn you can go for a coin spreading plague and try and use that nourish either later on for ramp if you pick up an ultimate infestation in the next couple coming turns or if you need to draw for some outs uh tice has you know some plan in mind with going for this it's most likely that tice is worried about something you know large hitting the board this turn or just something buffing something else up that way he can go Spreading Plague, Naturalize. So I think that's what Tice's head is at, is that he wants to go Spreading Plague, Naturalize to kind of guarantee that his 1-5s live. I'm not too sure about it, because the turn I'd be scared of something big hitting the board is when the zoo has 5 mana because of Fungal Master and Despicable Dreadlord. Uh, I just feel like this play strands the twig in hand now for... Oh, okay. Mind Control Tech is a possibility, but it has to be Plague here, right? Mind Control Tech can get some work done later on. Um, I wonder if Tice feels so pressured that he has to naturalize away the Light Warden already. He may very well have to because I, it's such a difficult call. I don't think Tice wants to naturalize such a small target, especially because, you know, it gives Bunny Hopper more draws for something like a Doom Guard or something, you know like a fungal mancer that can just kind of tear into the sports state. So we see Tice had this plan in mind where he just wanted to go for the spreading plague into the naturalized, just, you know, fitting out very well with his upcoming turns. Oh, and he actually chooses to remove the biggest minion on board, although uh, um, I don't really want to call it a punish because after this fungal mancer comes down, the light warden can still be cleared off by two plague uh, sorry, Scarabs, although, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about it. I feel like having the Fungal Mancer heal up a 4-3 in effect is as threatening as no matter how much attack this Light Warden would be because it can get three attacks in to the Scarabs as opposed to the Light Warden, which only has two health. Um, in any case, Bunny Hopper also has the capability to play another Happy Ghoul after having seen the Plague. This is some refill if I've seen it. Yeah, this is looking, uh, looking fairly decent for Bunny Hopper here. He will have, you know, a fairly okay way to get through this plague if he chooses to, you know, commit onto that fungal enchanter. But I think he wants to develop more minions first and then eventually get to the point where he can take a bunch of value trades and then make this Light Warden absolutely massive. Yeah, that's very true. I actually really like this. The Chain Gangs protect the Light Warden and then... It makes it so that it can take another hit onto the beetles, and then you can heal the Light Warden, and then it can kill another two more. But now Tice has the rune to play mind control tech here. There are 
I'd say anything but the voodoo doctor is a welcome sight. Light Warden, of course, would be the best. Oh, Ooh, there you go. <laughs> hits, hits the Light Warden. That was the best take from Tice there. That's very fortunate for him. Is that he would have had a very difficult time trying to answer that in the next couple turns, as he might just have to nourish for an answer. And Bunny Hopper would have eventually just kind of gotten through that plague. I mean, Bunny Hopper also is running a copy of Mossy Horror that would have cleared off the majority of his own board, but would have helped him a lot in this you know, particular situation. Oh, I'm actually pretty surprised to see that Tice takes the time to trade into one of the Saranite Chain Gangs. I feel like this would have been the same around Mossy Horror, and uh, I don't think you can adequately play around Fungal Mancer by just removing one minion, so I feel like that might have been doing some of Bunny, work, Bunny Hopper's work for him. I'm unsure. I think the one thing killing off that token does is it allows for less uh, fungal enchanter uh, shenanigans or sure. potentially something like a fungal mancer as well. I don't know if fungal mancer would obviously come onto that minion as one of the targets, but I think that's what Tice was trying to think is trying to, you know, limit Bunny Hopper's options in the next up couple, you know, coming of turns. So the awkward thing is that this fungal enchanter is going to make that life warden absolutely monstrous. So he might think that this is not even the turn to go for the fungal enchanter. But having picked up some soul fires, I think it gives him the license to... Okay, starts with a mind control tech with the possibility of discarding the other soul fire. Hmm. Yeah, I think he went for doing that because he knows the light warden would be forced to go through the Serenite Chain Gang, whereas the whereas the Mind Control tech would be able to take a value trade. And with the pickup of Ultimate Infestation there, <laughs> this is looking pretty good for Tice now. Can even go ahead and draw three, see what he draws from that, maybe get that twig going as well. This is looking like it's about to be Tice's game. Yeah, I, I want to go back and look at Bunny Hopper's turn again. He did rope before playing that Solarium, or it took a lot of time. So when the new cards were drawn, he hardly had any time to think about it. I wonder if there was some kind of room to maybe fit in the Fungal Enchanter before playing Soulfires. I think he still would have had the mana to fit in Fungal Enchanter and both Soulfire. Of course, that makes it more likely that one Soulfire discards the other Soulfire, but if you can target the Light Warden with one, then you can also get down at least one Happy Ghoul, depending on where the Soulfire charge lands on. I mean, discard. So, I don't know. A little bit sketchy, but Tice definitely looks like he has this game. He's at 27, and the refill is coming. Yeah, it's a very difficult call to make, especially as Bunny Hopper was trying to think of, you know, all the potential draws from that Solarium, and, you know, the rope started to burn, so it was coming down to the wire there, and he had to make some decisions. So I think he just tried to make those decisions as quickly as possible with, you know, the cards that he had. So you really can't blame Bunny Hopper sometimes, because when that rope comes up, I don't know about you, Gia, but I, I, get, uh, I get panicky. I start to get into panic mode, and I just start playing cards. Yeah, I know the feeling for sure. Um, Bunny Hopper there, just trying to make the best play that he could and hope that there was no UI, but Tice, of course, no hesitation in playing that. And um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a concede come out from Bunny Hopper. Yeah, you never know, though. Maybe uh, Tice uh, decides to draw into, I don't know, non-Druid cards somehow. <laughs> I guess there's always that possibility. <laughs> it just fits in a tog waggle somewhere. <laughs> it's just... And even then, I think... Uh, Tice is still probably in the driver's seat. There's not really much that yeah. Bunny Hopper can do. He can try and make some kind of board state here and hope it sticks. But Tice just has a plethora of options in order to deal with that. And, you know, Bunny Hopper is getting pretty low. If Maligos and a couple other burn spells get found pretty quickly, I mean, this is just game over. I mean, I think it's game over already, but you never know. Yeah, I would agree. Tice has the option to go for this Spellstone to clear the Tar Creeper. He could have gone for Plague and Branching Paths. That's always my go-to play to try and tell the zoo, you have no more chance, please continue. <laughs> Let's get on with Ladder. But um, I guess Tice was looking for something in particular with the Ferocious Howl. You can also think of yeah, Spellstone and Swipe or Wrath and clear up most of the board, if not all. So 
Yeah, I think if you're Tice here, he's really trying to set up a way to set up some kind of two-turn lethal. So I think he was thinking about whether he commits, you know, branching paths for attack, just kind of clean these minions up. Because if we look right now, Bunny Hopper is currently at 18 health. There's no more healing in the deck because I believe both of the Fungal Enchanters and both the Voodoo Doctors are gone. There might be one more Fungal Enchanter or there might be a Life Trigger if Bunny Hopper does play it. I don't think he does. But there is that possibility. And Tice just has a lot of burn in his hand, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this, you know, ghoul just hit face just so that, you know, he kind of tries to end this game as quickly as possible because he knows Bunny Hopper is going to be tapping each turn. Yeah. The zoo list from Bunny Hopper is a bit interesting. I think it's a bit more tech towards anti-aggro. So he has one Tar Creeper, double Despicable Dreadlord, one Blood Knight, and no Life Drinkers. So this might not be the matchup he was hoping to hit with that, uh, th with the Tar Creeper, I mean. Although Despicable is pretty good against Druid. You see there, you know, Bunny Hopper is forced to get very aggressive here, and I believe that is just lethal coming out from Tice. Sees yeah. it immediately, and Tice is going to take game number two. Yeah, and already going up to a quick 2-0 lead, although in this history of the tournament, I don't think that can say that somebody is safe. We've seen so many reverse sweeps come out, especially during the first few days of the tournament, so... Uh, I'm sure the Tice fans are happy to see this, but Bunny Hopper has a fighting chance. Only has to deal with this um, zoo from Tice himself, but three times. <laughs> yeah, dealing with Zulak one time is already, uh, you know, pesky enough. When you have to deal with Zulak three times, it's going to be quite the uphill battle for Bunny Hopper. Bunny Hopper does have access to some pretty decent Vex against Zoo, however. You know, I think the Even Shaman has a very you know, fairly good percentage into the Zoo Warlock as it does have cards like that Mudspurk Eel and the, you know, just tempo swings from minions. Uh, with the Hunter, I think, you know, Flanking Strike is a very powerful card in that matchup as it allows you to just kind of keep the tempo on your side. However, the one thing is, though, Bunny Hopper is not running Flanking Strike. He is oh, yeah. running the bear oh. shark instead. So that's one big factor that I think is going to, it might actually play a huge role as the reason Hunter for the most part had a fairly solid and decent matchup against Zulok is just because it had access to cards like flanking strike when followed up by secrets but with bunny hopper, not having that, I think it's going to make a big difference. Yeah, I completely agree. Zoo historically has been weak to things like weapons and Things like flanking strike, which not only removes something but puts something on board, all because of the the massive tempo swing that it's able to provide. So Hunter has one of those pieces with the eagle horn bow, but the secrets just aren't going to do that much when played individually because uh, explosive trap can only clear a handful of minions from Zoo. Not to mention if they play they play Kelisa, it can clear nearly nothing at all. So it could be quite an uphill battle, but I do like, as you mentioned, the chances of this even Shaman. It reminds me of Midrange Shaman back in the day, but without the brokenness, just because you start out with a curve and then you have board removal also. Yeah, and it looks like Bunny Hopper is just going to go ahead and queue up that even Shaman first. I'm not sure, did you see any even Shaman on your first, uh, on your first day of casting? Because I believe even Shaman for the most part, unless it was Kalento's game, has been banned out from Bunny Hopper. No, I didn't. I don't think anybody brought it to the two groups that I cast on day one. But you're right that it has picked up a ton of bans. So uh, a lot of people respect the power of the Merc Spark Eel, I gotta say. It's just so powerful. It's like it's like a body that comes with a backstab. It's, that's pretty powerful now that you put it that way. I mean... SI7 agent, you have to combo, and it and has less stats, or it has more stats, but it's three mana. Yeah, the the stats per mana is just the same as the vanilla minions you would get with Merc Spark Eel, but also you get that powerful early game effect. And I think it's with that reasoning that Tice is not hard mulliganing for Flame Imp and something like that. The Void Walker is actually um, a bit more threatening in the sense that it can survive one proc of the Merc Spark Eel. Oh, this is a rough call for Tice here, as he would love to, you know... You're playing with a very double-edged sword with both of these one-drops. If you play out the 
Void Walker, it gets very easily contested by something like this Acidic Swamp Ooze. But if you play out the Kobold Librarian, it gets pretty contested by this Vicious Scalehide. So it's kind of a you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't kind of play there as you're not quite sure what you want to go for. What do you think you're going to be weaker to? Definitely a catch-22. And let me tell you something, those two minions that you mentioned are both one of in the yes. deck for Bunny Hoppers. So that is quite unfortunate, I guess, is what Tice is thinking. But later he'll find out that he would have been kind of in a bad spot the other way around, too. Uh, it might be that he even just goes for the Soul Infusion to make a 3-5 Voidwalker. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, I do like this. Especially, you know, having that Voidwalker held back with the draw of that Soul Infusion. This is one of those starts that, you know, gives Azu a lot of game against the Even Shaman. And one of the reasons why, you know, sometimes Zulok just can take wins out of nowhere from matchups it may not necessarily be the strongest against. Especially because when you play a, a two-mana Tar Creeper without any downside, I, I'd play that card in almost all my decks. Yeah, I totally agree. This early extending of one card for not the maximum value, I guess, is making it so that Bunny Hopper will not be able to take value trades with any of his minions. So Tice will at least be able to clear off one thing at a time. And the way that even Shaman is able to wrest control of the board in the early game is to stick one or two things and then uh, milk the value off of Flame Tongue Totem. So if they don't have the minions, they're forced to go to their plan B, which is just survive until Hagatha and then play out bigger minions. Yeah, Bunny Hub was just thinking long and hard there. He wanted to, you know, try to convince himself not to play this Acidic Swamp Ooze into that, you know, it's not a Void Walker, it's not a Void Lord, it's a Void... What, what would you call that? It's not a Void, void Walker, creeper. it's not a Void... There you go. There we go. That's that's <laughs> a perfect name for it. Into this Void Creeper, because Tice is just has a sweet value trade, and then can heal it back up with the Fungal Enchanter. But Tice, you know, I don't think he gets greedy here playing the Doubling Imp. I think you just kind of take how good this value trade was. Yeah, I agree. Even though you don't get the happy ghoul, just being able to put this Voidwalker out of the range of, I was going to say, Merc Spark Eel or even a Flame Tongue, Flame Tongue Totem coming down now is just making it so that Bunny Hopper doesn't have any options. He will be forced to play all his minions in response from now on. And as long as Tice is wary of things like Sea Giant and not playing too hard into Hagatha when the time comes, he could have pretty solid control, control of the board for the rest of the game. Yeah, very heads up by Tice, just not, you know, getting too greedy, understanding that he just wants to go ahead and make the most out of those cards. Your bunny hopper here, I think you just have to get the eel down just to just to put something else on the board and hope that Tice doesn't have any kind of strong follow-up. But as we can see, if Tice wants to do so, he could Solarium, just try and find some one-drops to spam the board. Or he could just play Doubling Imp and kind of call it a day at that as well. So at least the good thing about the Brick Spark Eel, if it goes on to the Voidwalker, it makes it so that it will most likely die next turn because he rolled the, the Searing Totem. He has now enough attack power and split out across three minions so that Tice can't actually clear everything. But he picked up a heal card, so... Yeah, that Voodoo Doctor draw was really good for Tice here. It just keeps getting better and better as his start is very explosive. We'll be able to Voodoo Doctor up that Void Creeper in order to take some value trades. Tice just has to be wary that Sea Giant is going to be active pretty soon. So it looks like he might trade off two minions and then put one more down. So Sea Giant will cost four next turn. It's playable. That is true. Maybe Tice is trying to be conscious of that. Maybe that's how he feels he loses this game. But it looks like Tice is just going to go ahead and uh, play that out I, I believe it is like you said castable no matter what but does tice care too much about that i mean look how much pressure he has on the board i think you have to respect not just sea giant but also flame tongue possibly coming down oh for sure i definitely like the trades i just don't think he really cares too much about this sea giant he can just go oh, ahead yes. and you know keep going in because he has such a wide board state that shaman's gonna have an issue dealing with yeah, because this isn't even lock. Even though they play a giant, they can't follow it up with something like Defile. It's just going to be forced to start trading at some point. Um, but I don't see an argument for going for 
corpse taker instead because it's just going to eat less attacks than the sea giant would anyway. And he can also fit in a hero power if you play sea giant. Yeah, I really like the sea giant here. I think it's the only viable play for Bunny Hopper. He's just trying to think, if, you know, is there any reason not to play this sea giant? But I definitely think he's going to go for it with the hero power and then try and pass his turn. For Tice next turn, he's going to have an interesting decision between whether he wants to just play out that Doom Guard to get such pressure on the board state, or does he want a Solarium to try and find you know some other answers or some other cards maybe to potentially deal with the Sea Giant like Soul Fires? It's definitely a tough call. Yeah, um, I think if you're scared that you won't be able to remove the Sea Giant, Vo uh, Doom Guard doesn't seem like a huge beneficial play on board because as long as bunny hopper can clear the void creeper then the sea giant can take a good value trade onto the doom guard so i kind of like this from tice he also picks up a fungal enchanter so he can take even more value trades if he likes and uh it. yeah it's looking pretty scary for bunny hopper tice's solarium was insane there not only being able to heal up the majority of his minions with that second fungal enchanter but also just gets the Light Warden in order to make it just so, so powerful on the next coming turns. I mean, it's how many? How much is it going to heal? It's going to gain, you know, to a 5-2? That's insane. I think even more because of this value. Oh, that's right. I love seven. that play from Tice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so what Tice, yeah, what Tice did there is uh, actually hit with the Voodoo Doctor first in order to give the scale high the attack, in order to buff the Light Warden up even further. That was a great play from Tice. That is really cute. I didn't even spot that, the lifesteal. And Tice, yeah, he's not even damaged himself, but he didn't need to heal himself to get this Light Warden to be a 9-2, big enough to contest the Sea Giant and Bunny Hopper. All he can do is try to hope to survive until the Mossy Horror, but even the Mossy is not going to clean very much up. Oh, and rolling the totem gets him the healing totem to buff this light warden <laughs> even oh more. I think the one decent thing for Buddy Hopper is because the scale hides out of the deck, this uh, this minion won't have life steal. So <laughs> fortunately for him, it but won't get too much. He's dead, right? Oh, uh, seventeen, nineteen. Yeah, with the Doom Guard, it's just lethal. You trade into <laughs> because of no life steal. <laughs> but if there was life steal, then then the light warden would. Pretty much just cancelled it out, right? So I guess it was dead either way. Yeah, Bunny Hopper having none of that said, you know what, Tice, take it 3 0. And Tice is moving on to your top four. That was that just was... a very impressive series. 